and welcome to Co-op Guild. This is Steve here, Kim. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> oh, man, I'm loving the chat right now. It <laughs> so... is an amazing evening. Congratulations to Derek for rolling the 20. <laughs> Nat 20. Way yeah. to go, Derek. Yeah, Way to go. And I love Matt's reaction. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> he lost a die rolling contest with Derek. Yeah, yep, go. Yep. Hey, Who knows what could happen? Everybody, everybody gets a shot, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. But uh, welcome. This is Co-op Corner for the month of April. So I we'll try to do this at this uh, Wednesday, the first Wednesday of every month, where we take a look at upcoming games for the month of for that current month, and we do a live Q and A afterwards. So if you're here for the news, stick around. We'll do that right now, and then after that, if you have got questions, it could be about anything, board games or not. We'll do that chat, and I have a feeling. If you don't have any questions, I just one topic we're going to talk about for sure. So, I know one thing that yes. came up in Discord. Are we talking about the same thing? Yes, but that's at the Q&A because it's not technically an April release, but yes. Ugh, fine. Real yes. schmools. Yes. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's start the fun with um, talking about what's coming up. Oops. Okay. What are you doing? I didn't time it right. There you go. Oh, oh see, yeah, kind. we're we're too big. This is what happens when you're not down here right away. So I no, I was here five minutes early. That's fine. I'll just shrink us down. Yeah, there see, you go. I wish my waistline was that easy. Can you? <laughs> okay. Do I feel like you're like over there? You should be. I can scoot over a little bit. It's there fine. you go. Okay. Kim is on Kickstarter. There you go. <laughs> That's <Jeez>. right. <laughs> oh man. All right. Okay. So what are we? What are we doing? Let's talk about the first game, which is currently on Kickstarter. <laughs> uh, that is. Um, Orient Express, uh, this is, what's it called, what's the, the horror, yeah, horror on the Orient Express. And I think this is a popular role-playing game, it's based in the Lovecraft universe, and the whole premise is you are working together, um, on your investigators on a train. Mm -hmm. The train is going through Dreamland and all these other weird locations, and it's trying to reach its destination safely, but... There are some suspects on board the train, and some of them are in, are cultists that are summoning the monsters on the train and other bad things they're doing. So your job is to locate the suspects um, before the train reaches its final des destination, which sounds bad. Reaches its intended destination. <laughs> final destination. I mean, it could. No, this I can't be drive behind log trucks because of that movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, did am I? I'm not crazy. We talked about this at the last month, right? We did mention it, but now there's information. Oh, now I thought it was going to launch at the end of March, but it actually launched at the beginning of April. So okay. I was a little off. Okay. So I apologize. But yes, we didn't miss talking oh, about Oh, we're this. not perfect. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> fine. Yeah. yeah Derek went, uh, went in on the bad boy. He loves Lovecraft. So. And it's a cool looking game. Yeah, it's got a lot of, um, it's got some cool miniatures in there and a cool train uh, moving pieces and stuff like that. So uh, lots of ways to lose. Oh, wait, wait. Go back to that train mini. Yeah. The dork in me is like, all right, how many pieces are glued together? Because that's not a one-piece mold. It could and... be. No, it can't. They know. It cannot be. It's not that one... big. It's tiny. No, that that's nothing to do with size, dear. I don't understand. Oh, you mean from <laughs> you mean from the uh, the the design of it? Yeah, that's yeah, not that's a true. that's not a single that's piece true. mold. <laughs> that's true. So anyway, I, I've <laughs> derailed already. Uh, Jay mentioned this. What? It's a mashup of Agatha's Christie's Murder on the Orient Express. That makes sense. That makes sense. It's about the training cultists. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. See, Derek, I've tried already, and you missed my my train pun already. So we're we're ready to go. Oh, that's what I did. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> oh goodness. Hey, hey, Dan. <laughs> I, I enjoy rule books. It's okay. it's normal, right? Right. Speaking no. of which, I was reading the rule book for this one. This is coincidentally, he so he was. I didn't get through the, the whole mm -hmm. thing, but um, I think it looks like there's a tabletop similar mod. So I'm tempted to try to get this one um covered. We'll see. Um, I haven't talked to Derek from Candy Studios about this, but I'm curious if he would want to stream this one. We'll see. Oh, I'm sure he's really excited about it. That's yeah. cute. Look at that little car. Yeah, so it's got some dice dice placement on there, and you have to. The cool thing is you have to deduce which of the suspects are the hidden cultists, which is kind of cool. So, as you're battling monsters, you're leveling up. Um, you can learn spells, for example. So it's got that whole Lovecraftian theme going on, and which is really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. 
I can talk about this game ad nauseum. Yeah, he <laughs> Derek is like full bore in this game. I love his excitement for this one. Mm-hmm. It is really cool. Um, horror games aren't really my style, but this one does look cool. So if it a different theme, I'd totally be into it. But yeah, it looks it looks really good. So but that is currently on Kickstarter, so you guys can go check it out if you guys are interested. Um, cool menus and stuff like yep. that. Hey Greg. So <laughs> Okay. What's next? Next. A uh, game that isn't new, but it has a new version. Millennium Blades is coming back to a crowdfunding. So this is currently a Kickstarter as well. So this is a game that simulates the CCG tournament experience. I say CCG is the customizable card game. So you can think of Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, Magic the Gathering. Those are like the big popular ones. It gives me that vibe, the Yu-Gi-Oh yeah. vibe. Because when I just saw Blades... And my first thought was Beyblades, like those little um, yeah, mm. shoo shoo things. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a proper term, yes. <laughs> shoo, but no, shoo. what you said makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, so you you are you're spending money in the game, your in game money, not real money, whatever, and you're buying singles, you know, individual cards to add into your deck as you're doing deck construction. Thanks for clarifying. Okay. <laughs> and then you're actually playing them in different combos, doing simulated tournaments. And at the end of tournaments, you open booster packs, which have new cards coming out that you can, you know, buy the cards and all that fun stuff. So it's got like all the elements of a CCG experience in one game. Now, I this is, just to warn everybody, it is a competitive game at its core. If I what sc- are we doing talking about it? And that's why I'm pulled <laughs> out. So if I scroll past all these cards, this this set, the Millennium Blade set rotation, this is the expansion you need that gives you co-op play. Okay. So now you can play against a boss together. So Mike is yeah. saying, or Matt's saying this is a deck builder. That Mike has played it. Mike has yes. played it, yeah. But would you say it's a deck builder over a... Um... He's really thinking. Yeah, great, I guess so. Great. I guess debate, so. Matt. <laughs> Good job. I mean, you are flipping a river of cards, essentially, and you're spending money to buy those cards into your, your deck. That's a um, deck builder. That's like, what, Dominion? Yeah, but it's 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 like you're... It's simulating the drafting of a CCG game. Like Magic the Gathering. Um, so... Well, then now I don't get what the differentiation is because in dominion that's a deck builder yeah example. it's sort of a deck builder yeah i agree with you matt on that one it's yeah sort of is. but yeah but how is how is that different than dominion where you you're spending money to buy cards to build your deck nope. that that's a deck builder or are we not saying that's not is that's not no 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 that is it so basically it distills down into is the act of customizing a deck i use that term to make a nebulous customizing deck is that part of the in-game experience or is that part of something you do outside the game and then more i think even more importantly is um how do you play cards in the game because a deck builder like dominion those cards are generally free to play uh, but in a game with what people use the term deck construction quite often use of those cards require additional resources to get them into play and that is a big dis- big distinguishing factor between those two of them. Now, strategy-wise, tactic-wise, our cards played, they have a lot of similarities between them. So in this game, we're talking about, um, not Beyblades, the, what's it called? It's a, it's a CCG simulator. Okay, but can I ask, what's the game called again? Millennium Blades. Millennium Blades. So yep. in this game, yep. you're saying that you have deck building outside of the game, you bring that to the game, and then you continue to build on it? Is that what you said? I'm not, sorry, I'm not following. Do you deck build something or prepare something outside the game and then you bring that into no because this is this is simulating that whole experience in the game itself but you start with like a standard yeah you start with some basic cards and you, so you how is, go through how, pyramid as well okay so i go back how is that different than dominion how is it different no. than legendary it, i mean that's what matt's point is like yeah. it kind of is like a deck builder Right, but then why isn't it? I'm really stuck on this. I'm sorry. It might why, be. It's why? not. It's not important. I don't care what you call it. It could be. <laughs> so, but that's not, I'm trying to understand your definition of a CCG versus deck all builder I'm in saying, this case. It's simulating the CCG tournament environment. That's all I'm saying. Whether you call it a deck builder, deck constructor, whatever, it's fine. I'm gonna. Move it's on. not important. I'm gonna move on, but I'm gonna to ask you more about this later because okay. it still doesn't make sense to me because <laughs> you, we don't call Dominion and Legendary and all these other games ccgs because it's not a ccg but then it's 
This game's the same thing as all those other games. CG, CCGs generally have rarity chase and stuff like that. So. Yeah. So does Legendary. You want to get the, the Super Uber card out. Yeah, but you don't go buy singles. I can't go to buy a single Legendary card at the store. Oh! That's what, buying, that's what I mean. This is not a complete in one box ready to go. It is. It is, but you are literally going by singles in the game. Just put a timestamp and say, Kim gets stuck <laughs> in a loop for five minutes. Go to yes. here. Go to here. <laughs> Buffering. Buffer. We're going to move on. Yes, exactly, Matt. It's Millennium Blaze simulates a CCG. It simulates a CCG. I mean, CCG, you guys are saying the same thing, so... but it's still not. <sighs> it's fine. Move it's on. Fine. We'll keep going. That's what I can get off this one. <laughs> I'm going to be laying in bed tonight and be like, that's doesn't make sense <laughs> probably okay um yeah this one's already on kickstarter so if you're looking for it um but like i said warning it you need that expansion to make it co-op so um i've not played this one but um want to put that one out so yeah awesome hi jonathan, jonathan welcome says, we'd love to try this but whenever i imagine getting to the table with my group i always think yeah i would rather just draft a magic the gathering cube yeah yeah <laughs> that's true I mean, there's a lot of CCGs out there, right? And um, I, I love playing. I still play Magic the Gathering on occasion, but I play the cooperative one. There's like some, um, they were called challenge decks that were released, and they are AIs to run themselves. So my son and I uh, will grab some decks to play. That's really fun. Sorry, Greg, that picture needs to just disappear. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's, true. it's true. It's a jackal. It's a jackal. It's a jackal. It's a jackal. Hey, Steve, <laughs> is it like the Super Bowl? It's a Super Bowl. <laughs> Anyway, oh man okay so that is so this is a deck build that's it's go. a deck builder <laughs> maybe we'll see <laughs> okay moving on to the next game coming up and that is tiny epic game of thrones this one's coming to kickstarter april 9th uh so i'm a sucker for the tiny epic series so yes, this is, it's the back mm -hmm. uh so I, all the Tiny Epic games support solo play, so I know this is going to be solo play. What I was surprised to hear that they're going to have cooperative play in this one. Ooh, but the houses, they are not divided. I know. <laughs> so I'm curious how that's going to work. Everybody um, kills everybody in that show. Yeah, yeah. Watch out, Steve. We'll see. Oh, so do you remember Tiny Epic Galaxies? I don't remember yesterday. So Okay, so no. <laughs> So Tiny Epic Galaxies, you have uh, your rolling dice and you have this follow mechanic in there. It's based off that and with a twist, they're saying. So if you know that, how that works. And then it's got um, multi-use cards, which I'm, I like get excited about multi-use cards. I love love it when those are in games. Mm -hmm. So interested. I'm not sure about the Game of Thrones IP being thrown on here, but like I said, I'll back it anyway. We'll definitely cover in the chat in the future. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't... Your, to your point, I watched all of Game of Thrones. Like, I was a completionist on that one because I was... I forced myself to finish. I'm going to say that in that in that show. So mm -hmm. I don't I don't know how this is going to work. But anyway. <laughs> Jonathan's like, I've cooled on Tiny Peg, but I'm still very excited for this one. Why am I like this? I know it. I know it. <laughs> so it's kind of like this game you don't remember. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Waiting for a fans flight games to get super greedy and make a Game of Thrones game like Lord of the Rings. I mean, didn't they have a... Didn't they already do that? They made a living card game with Game of Thrones. Don't but look that, at me. I don't know. I'm pretty sure they did, <laughs> but it's no longer continued, so... Hmm. But yeah. Anyway, so that's coming up. Um, I, what did I say? I said April 9th? I think I said April 9th. Yes, April 9th. All right. Next thing we'll talk about, Hispania. So this game is coming to GameFound April sixteenth. PVP game. That's true. It was a PVP game. Yeah, yeah. Um, coming to GameFound April sixteenth. Uh, this one you are working as uh, I think it's Praetorians. Oh, Praetors. Yeah, Praetors and Consuls from Rome, and you are trying to um, convince uh, well Spain to to join. So. Uh, one to three players was kind of interesting. It looks like a very small box. Um, I was trying to look up, read the rules on this one. I haven't gone through all the rules on on, that, on, on this yet. Um, I'm interested. Yeah, it's going to be pretty, I mean, fairly cheap game, to be honest, what it is. So I'm not, don't know a whole lot about it yet before I get through the rest of the rules. But I was, 
I always love historical themes and co-ops because there's not too many of them out there. So I was excited to see this one is co-op. Cool, cool. Hi, Elaine. Welcome. Hey, Elaine. <clears throat> but yeah, Hispania. Hispania. All right. Next one. Let's move on. One Hit Heroes. We played this one. This one you could talk a lot about. Because we mean, actually have a video coming up in the next few days on this one. So we, we do? You recorded that, right? We recorded that. We, again, I don't remember yesterday. I might have a problem. <laughs> we did. It was only like a week ago. We recorded it? Yes. We did. <laughs> and I, okay. It's all coming back. Um, <laughs> yes. No, this game was fun to play. We played a couple times. Um, I really like this game. Yeah. So the premise of this game, I should explain it real quick. Sure. It says on the screen there, too. Um, it's a boss battler, but everyone, all the heroes only have one hit point. So if anyone takes a da well, single damage, everyone loses. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm distracted by the chat. Yes, I know. It's bad. I blame work. Work is really stressful right now, and it's garbling up everything up in here. Although, both my sister and I do have really bad memories, which is interesting. This was just last week. Was we recorded this together. Explain, can you explain the game? I'm reading chat. Yeah. Thanks, Derek. No, man. This is a really cool game. I, I recommend everyone to look at this one. Um, Meet Me at the Table just dropped their video today. So if you want to take a look at it, go check their video out. I know Mike has a video coming up, I think, Sunday. Ours are probably between those days. I haven't quite figured out when the editing is going to be done to drop this one. But definitely look at, look at this one. It is really cool. So you will pick a uh, character to play. And as a unique deck, you start with, starting deck. And then you'll draw, grab an episode box. The episode box has four bosses in them. You play them in order. And your job is to um, just take out the boss. Remove all their health. And you'll be playing, uh, I think it's just two cards a turn. Oh, you take two actions? I have to double check. But anyway, you, pl you play a few cards a turn. Um, and then you drop to five cards again. And you keep just playing cards, doing that stuff. It exits three cards. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I make it real sound real simple, but, but the interesting thing about it is you have aggro. So as you deal damage to the bad guy, you will add aggro to your board. The higher aggro is, the more likely you're going to get attacked. And it's very dangerous because if you get hit, you lose. You also have equipment, which you can sacrifice to uh, avoid a single hit. So it's a lot of this mitigation of like, ooh, should I take the damage now? Should I pull back? And each boss has a different approach. The cool thing about it is after you defeat a boss, you open a pack of cards, and you have a draft. So you can actually add a couple cards into your deck. This is a... Is that a CCG? No. This is a deck color, for sure. Keep going. So, so anyway. Um, but yeah, you play through the episode, and if you can get through all four bosses, each, each of the... After one boss is one, two, three, you open up additional packs, packs of cards. After you get through the fourth boss, boss, you win the episode. And there's going to be four episodes in this core set. Really cool game. Really enjoyed this one. Even our son got into it, too. Yeah, Caleb, He, we finished playing it, and at one point he goes, is this ours? And Because I think it was a demo we got, right? Yeah, it was a prototype. So we're, we're going to yeah. you know, send it on. And we were like, no, we don't get to keep this one. And he was so sad. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very approachable. It is. You said it, it's, you were making it sound simple. It is kind of simple in a sense. Like you're. It's simple, but the card play is pretty. It's interesting, and like how you how you engage it, right? I mean, it's nothing. Maybe like a three year old can't play this. Yes, but the kids can play it for sure. Yeah, but yeah. Well, young... yeah, not too young, but you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So like it, it's approachable. Yeah. I think that's a better word. It's approachable, but I will say it is very cha excuse me, very challenging. It's um, like some of the bosses and you start off are you know on the maybe moderate side but it rhymes up really quick and yeah it progresses oh, mm -hmm. tick tick boom man go watch that video that i remember recording and i remember that <laughs> now you remember okay you just had to refresh in a couple things <laughs> yeah so anyway one hit heroes big recommend go check this one out it is like i said it's coming to kickstarter april 16th it's a good one all right let's keep moving on next game to talk about oh let's scroll down Corpse, Corpse of Discovery. So this one, kind of cool premise. Uh, you are part of uh, Lewis and Clark. Actually, I should mention real quick. This, this one is coming to Kickstarter April 23rd. But you are part of Lewis and Clark uh, Expedition. But you're traveling with them, except this is a weird fantasy version of it where there's monsters along your way across the West. And so your job is to take all these monsters in. Oh my gosh. Go ahead. Tangent. So I watched oh this gosh. YouTube guy called Boil Time Hobby. Okay. 
hobbies, hobbies, boil time. Okay. He is a um, artist creator. He makes miniatures mm -hmm. and does kit bashing and things like that. And he has this whole world of the wild imaginary West. And that is exactly what I thought yeah. of when you brought this up. Yeah. Anyway, if you like cool kit bashing minis, you can go check out that guy. <laughs> that was kind of cool. Yeah, this is actually based upon a book. I'm not sure if it's a comic book or a book series. Um, so it's based upon that that alternative history, which is kind of cool. Um, designers, the same designer who does Junkyard, Belford, and Mind Management, by the way. Uh, but yeah, so the interesting thing about this is um, you will be... Here's an example. The, the, actually, this here. This is really cool. You will be adding... You'll be covering the board with tokens and sliding in the secret um, sleeve into this so you don't know what the answers are. And then you'll be... As you explore, you actually will flip these over. And so each map is going to have a different way of approaching it in a different way of de it's a deduction game you have to deduce how to uncover and move along this this board which is kind of cool that is interesting so i don't know how many maps they're going to have but they said they're going to actually add maps to the website like monthly or something like that so this will have some longevity as well yep thanks brian also not a ccg <laughs> no it's not a ccg <laughs> yeah it's, a, it's an interesting th theme uh, map, uh mix up but it's based upon an existing ip um in fact i think it says at the bottom of this uh, this here um based on the comic book manifest destiny yep that's what it's based off cool. so but yeah it's it says unlimited replayability um i'm not sure what i think they only mean unlimited replayability because they're gonna be give, provide more maps but i get the impression that the maps are solvable like once you play through it a few times you kind of remember the solution so we'll see what it is <laughs> <laughs> thanks matt <laughs> yep anyway this seems cool <laughs> i'm i'm interested in this one it's a uh, kind of cool theme uh different premise and yeah i'm curious to check check this out when it uh becomes available so yeah i'll have to look into it more if if you're interested because i i don't like there's no hidden movement or things like no yeah you're deducing the you don't know what's underneath the covers of the yeah. tokens you put down that's right down so that's kind of um tiny epic crime type thing where you got a little bit yeah Maybe. Yeah, a little Maybe bit. Maybe not. Nah. A little know. bit. Okay. So. All right. It. it it's like a guys. CCG. Or is it? <laughs> <laughs> People jump to the section, just watch the beginning or middle and late section. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. And I'm still getting Matt and Brian. Yeah. Dupes. 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 Yep. All right. One more game to talk about for this month, and that is Fire Siege. Uh, this one is coming to Kickstarter April 23rd. Um, does this look familiar to you? Yes, this okay. one I remember. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> yes, because you you mentioned to me yesterday. Oh, I remember something from yesterday. Because I asked, what games are you talking about? Uh -huh. And you said Fire Siege. And I was like, oh, is this that um, fire uh, truck one? No. The fire? <laughs> so I, I remember you corrected me yesterday. Um, no, but yeah, we played this one. Yes, yeah, so we actually already have a playthrough of this one on the channel. We were sent the upgraded components. Um, they have a brand new board, for example. Um, so we're going to do another uh, video of this one in the near future. Uh, this one is a tower defense game where you're playing as centaurs. And there are missions you must complete. And you can complete the missions in different ways. But um, once you complete enough of the missions, you win the game. If like they ever reach the center of the city, you lose. If someone dies, you also lose in the game. The cool thing about this, it's got an interesting, like, almost Hanabi approach to it. If you're familiar with that game. Wait. How how so? Is it the blind card? Thing? Yeah, it's blind card okay, thing. Okay. Yeah. So you'll be drawing tiles out of a bag, and you'll be placing them into a stand, and you see one side, and everyone else at the table sees the other side. And so one side is bad, and one side is good. It's kind of random how they come out. But you'd be like, oh, I want to play this one. And everyone else sees the other side. So you can't say exactly what's on the other side, but you can say, ooh, that's not a good play right now. Should avoid that one. So there's a little bit of cooperation on that side. Very, very little downtime in this game because everyone's, it's basically everyone's turn all the time. It moves really quick. Uh, but that little um, not knowing what's on the other side of the tile, those actions, it's a fun, it's a fun game. I enjoy this one. So. Okay. Yeah. I would only make that Hanabi reference because you don't know what the, what the one side of the card is. Otherwise, it, yeah, I would never put those two together. No, no, that's the only reason. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. 
Um, yeah, I had a... <laughs> what would you have for breakfast this morning? <laughs> I had a banana and an apple. There you go. You remembered. <laughs> <Good job. laughs> I did. This is easy, G. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. I do realize uh, we missed a question from Brian when we were talking. Oh, about... did I miss something? Uh, no, no, no. It's fine. Uh, when we were talking about um, One Hit Heroes, is that soluble? Um, yes. I say, I say hesitantly because you can dual hand it, but I believe they're supposed to have a bot or some other way to simulate the second uh, person so you can play with just one character but i didn't actually see it so the plan is yes it is going to be true solo but i don't know what that is tbd tbd and, the... and ryan's question on this one here did this start crowdfunding but canceled relaunch yes the, it was on crowdfunding in the past um they canceled and this is the upcoming relaunch for it so they improved um the visuals a lot they took feedback from the the community so I'm looking forward to that one yeah, yeah. I mean, I had fun playing it. It's a good um, game. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I'm trying to remember on your other thoughts. Go watch the review or playthrough video. Then that's where yeah. you can. Yeah, we share our our first impressions at the end of that video. So. Yeah, but like you said, that was a early view. So whatever has changed. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay, that is all we have for the news for April coming up. April. So lots of games coming out. So now we're moving on to the Q&A part. Well, and if any games were missed that you guys know of, we're like, well, how could you not talk about this one? It Co-op, please. Otherwise, there's just way too many games for sure. Oh, it's true. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us know because at first you were like, there's only two games to talk about. I missed a lot on my <laughs> list. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I found, I found them. So we're good. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I'm sure I'll miss games, of course. Um, I try to do my best covering things, but there's just so many games all the time. It's, it's yeah. impossible to keep track of everything. Um. I'm waiting for a specific one. No, this is it. That's it, Derek. Nothing else. Nothing else to talk about. Nothing. I feel like we're, just... we're in live Q and A time. Should we talk about the what's uh, was announced? Specific one. Oh, are you talking about the MU? Yeah. What was that? Yeah. Oh, wait. What's what's this thing here? Oh wow! Look at you. So, this is not <laughs> related to April news. This is june or july i can't remember which month one of those two months i apologize coming this summer yeah coming this summer so this was announced today um more united but it is not Marvel united it is dc heroes united so yeah so we're gonna get our dc characters coming out to that one <laughs> yeah i'm so torn on this i know on discord um was it yan or somebody i can't remember who it was but it was like talk about it because would we back it with everything that we love and have with marvel united is dc going to have to come into this house kind of so let me <laughs> let me answer that more clearly okay. um honestly i'm not interested in the dc part of it i say kind of because i want to get like the core set or just a small portion of it so we can bring it to the channel and do a comparative a comparison between them for the channel purposes because the core set is only like 30 bucks so i think that's worth, that's worth it okay so, so i my thought was i'm a <laughs> derek's like the batman stuff is my driving to get it because i'm batman, <laughs> I'm batman. I'm batman. um but yeah so i'm glad I'm they're doing this because i think this is going to uh, these characters there's not really that many or any good dc games sorry there's probably a few of them out there but um I've not been excited about most of the DC games coming out. And the United system is solid. So this will be a really good solution for that. Um, and the nice thing is, actually, I can stop this. We can jump over to this part here. Oh, not that part. Just kidding. Um, ignore that. Let me jump over to... Don't look behind the curtain. <laughs> yeah, behind the curtain. We can jump over to the game found page real quick. Yeah. So, so for, right. for me, my first thought was like, no, we can't, we can't bring this IP into this house. It's just too, too much. But... I am a sucker for the core three. Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Well, that's in the core set. So, so it's already if, shown here. Okay, good. Set. So if... But, hmm. Kite Man. If he's like... <laughs> you gotta have Kite Man. <laughs> the thing, though, with this is, like, you have... Between Marvel and DC, you have a character that is the other ip yeah you know yeah you so do. you don't really need well okay i'm that's a terrible word to use i know is it necessary no it's kind of just the wonder twins <laughs> yeah wonder twins powers activate uh, 
anyway. Um, but yeah, you're right, because you instead of Flash, just grab Quicksilver. Yeah. Instead of Iron Man, grab Batman? N- yes. Kind of. Playboy billionaire. They're very different in that sense. I don't know. Um, so, okay. I will allow the core set in the house for that reason. It'd be good to cover it. I think we need to do a comparison for sure. Yeah. Yep. So, but yeah, I, I'm excited to see what comes out of it. it lo- the nice thing is um, they are adding um, the same equipment we've seen in season three. A lot of the improvements we've seen in season two. So like, if you've not gotten any United at, at all and you want some of that good mechanic stuff without having a bunch of content or getting unknown characters, that's the problem with season three is a lot of unknown characters. Jan and I were talking about this one. And this is nice because you get the core characters, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and you get those really good mechanics that were introduced through season one, two, and three. Yeah. There was another really good idea on Discord that someone said was you could take the um, Civil War scenario and try to figure out how to have Marvel versus DC. For sure. That would be cool, I I Well, we did have confirmation from the designer that this is compatible with Marvel. So you could actually grab Superman and play him alongside Iron Man in the game. It totally would work out. Yeah. So, but yeah. Uh, Yeah, the villain passes, flip and triggers and stuff like that, which is cool. Yeah, um, Derek and I were talking about this because uh, actually it's on the screen right now. You can see, um, I can can highlight for you guys. I have that ability. So if you look at uh, Bama's card right here. I can't read that. I know you can't. I can't enhance it any further, sorry. Uh, But basically it's got the ability that says, hey, you can flip this card face down while it's in the storyline to trigger, to stop a master plan card or something like that. So that's a cool ability because now we have cards in the storyline that down to, to trigger stuff and um but i also was mentioning that's not unique per se because in our literally on our last playthrough of marvel united uh feral she has that ability where she puts cards in the storyline and then she can sometimes like flip them face down for effects so her effects are preventing a wound or crisis token um this obviously batman's more powerful with his um, ability to outwit people so he's able to do that but yeah it is Batman Dylan has it. I'm curious if that's going to be a persistent thing through a lot of other characters, or if it's going to be Batman exclusive. I don't know. We'll find out. A lot of questions, but it's it's cool. I I know they're going to do good, cool stuff with the the theme and mechanics of this one. Wolverine takes <laughs> out the Joker in thirty seconds. Yeah. No mercy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think another thing that I think was mentioned on Discord um, was this core set has probably learned. They've learned so much. Mm-hmm. From like vanilla MU corset. Right. So it's probably gonna be yeah. a good one. Because all the corsets seem to get better and better as a as a whole. So but yeah, looking forward to seeing what, what more we hear about this one. You'll see the equipment and joker and stuff like that. So Oh Harley Quinn's in there, maybe. Maybe you will get Kite Man if Poison Ivy's in there. I don't know. Kite Man and Condiment King. We were talking about not, that too. That's not going to be in there. Condiment King. It's not going to be in there. Okay, look. Look at these cards. Do you, they see anything else? No. No, no. Yeah. So, a lot of this lot, looks it looks good. We'll put it that way. So, I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, not a whole lot of information yet, but you know we're going to be watching this one when it comes out. So. Awesome. Yeah, villains have passive while face-up effects. That's true. But that's not new either, because we've had we have a lot of those um, while face up abilities. So <laughs> they shove pets in our face to better give us Condiment King. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that is a real villain, by the way, everyone. We're not we're not pulling a leg. You can look it up. It's... Yeah, it is. Now I would imagine you're gonna get um, Catwoman and Poison Ivy. Ooh, Bane. I don't know. So, like, the Justice League cartoon is really good. Yes. Um, Justice League Unlimited is amazing. Yeah. It's a really good cartoon series. It's really good. Yep. Enjoyed that one. We didn't never finished um, Young Justice League as well. That was, that was recommended to us. It was pretty good. We just never finished it. But it's interesting because the DC movies are generally not good so as dark. a whole. They're so dark and moody. Yeah, but... Hold on. The... Hold on. Sorry. Hold on. No, look at me. No, you didn't. There's but, a, there was a giant long hair. And okay. It, sorry. But I would say the cartoons are excellent. Oh, 100%. The, the so cartoon DC, movies and everything. DC nails the animation portion of the mm-hmm, market. Like, sure. it's so 
wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, the Marvel, I got, for all the Marvel movies, I got fatigue, for sure. Like, we haven't even seen the last three or four Marvel movies. I know, I want to watch them, but you're never in the mood to watch them. <laughs> it's just, I'm, I'm fatigued on the movies because, yeah. like, they were progressively getting too too campy almost or or not yeah they're also getting to characters that aren't as well known which... well i i did not know guardians of the galaxy when that movie first came out that's the fair. original that's guardians fair. movie i love that movie yeah. oh batman arkham video games are my favorite too brian i love oh, yeah. those, those are games. good those, those are, are really, really good. good really good yeah yeah so i don't know steve we'll watch the marvel movies we'll see him sometime <laughs> Since it's live Q and A, and when we're I haven't I don't see any questions yet, but I will mention that we did recently uh, finish watching Avatar. Uh, we watched the whole cartoon series, like the original one, with our son, which that that series is great. I enjoy that series a lot. And then we followed up with the live action one on Netflix, which I was expecting really really bad, but I actually wound up enjoying it. It was I thought they did a good job. Now it's not as good as the cartoon, but that's out there right now. It's just, it's just not. I mean, you can't with the limited time and everything. And they change things around to try to cram things in a shorter time frame. And they change some characters around, which I didn't quite care for. But overall, like, especially the, um, um, the recruitment of, what's crap? What do you, what's the word for, uh, finding the right people for the, uh, playing the roles? The, um. Casting? Casting, yes. The casting was excellent. Like, every person looked like them. Now, I disagree with you slightly on that one. Why? Who didn't look? Who didn't look the part? Um, Sokka and um. Really, Sokka didn't? I think Sokka. No, Sokka, sick. not Sokka. Um, uh, the the two bad guys, brother and sister. What are their names? Oh, um, Prince Zuko and um. Oh my gosh, I forget her name. We just spent how yeah. many hours watching? I, show? I agree with her. She doesn't look quite like her but it's her. really but it's, it's fine. really hard to say you look like a cartoon and like get that look yeah just exactly right. it's close enough so I, i'm not i'm not bashing it but um i do I thank azula yeah azula thank yeah, you thank, thank you. you that's the one. um i want to go back real quick and then we want to i'm gonna come back to it well, we'll, we'll finish yeah three questions on the form oh i didn't see yeah I'll pull up the form yeah um so hold on We're, we'll come back to avatar but oh i see the question Derek, now. Derek was saying don't <laughs> wait or you keep waiting on the marvel movies because they keep getting worse yeah um what are the thoughts on deadpool 3 that one i'm holding out hope for i don't watch previews for marvel movies because i know i'm gonna watch them eventually anyway so i have no idea so okay i'm it's so a bad I... question to ask okay, fine to the chat <laughs> i don't know i'm i'm really hoping that deadpool 3 is good i liked I think I think Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, I think he's learned his his uh, mistake with a uh, Green Lantern. So I I'm, I'm I think it'll be good. As so. long as as long as like the powers of to be at Marvel don't like get their hands in junk and mess it up, you know. Yeah, if he has his way, I think it'll be okay. Okay. But if they mess All with right. his his plan, uh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Yep. Um, right. and Brian liked the Robert Pattinson Batman. Um, we saw that. I my, it was okay. my bar yeah. honestly was set so low right. that I think that's why it's yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Um I think that's a similar for me as well because yeah. what was the Batman be Oh, Ben Affleck's Batman, which I just didn't work for me. Like the Batman vs. Superman. <laughs> it's like, it's like, what's your <laughs> Martha, why'd you say that name? I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. Could could not could not yeah deal with that i'm sorry but well, um then we're talking one piece too oh one anyway. piece i have not seen one I piece seen that sorry i, I derailed I, I need to see that one so so matt had low expectations too but it was good so i think that's a good thing like you, i go into dc movies like that's eh, just we'll see what happens mm -hmm. so yeah okay go to the forum what what are we missing okay so we do have some questions submitted by derek so it looks like uh, Kim, do you like LCG games? And if so, which is your go-to? If not, what makes them, what about them makes you uninterested? Is it a CCG or LCG? No, I'm kidding. Um, you know what I mean by LCG? Living card game. Got it. Ooh, see, I listen to you. Sometimes. Sometimes. It's just watch any of our playthroughs. I'm explaining the game and she's like, wait, what happened? What did we say? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, living card games, no, I don't. I'll play them if Steve does all the homework. Yeah, that's true. Like, that's true. I don't... I want to sit down and just, like, okay, if I'm building a deck, let me do it in the in the moment. I don't really want to prepare. Right, right. Um, so, yeah, so you'll build the decks for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, even Ashes. Ashes is fun. That's a good game. Mm-hmm. I don't have any interest in building a deck. Just just let me sit down and play. Yeah, it's funny because in Ashes, you played uh, Viper, which you really liked. But yeah. You, I can't remember. You were saying, like, oh, I like her, but I, I don't like how she's so focused on the giant snake. Or you needed, you wanted some. I wanted there. another, like, sidekick or another right. thing. Right. And he's like, oh, you could totally do that. Just you go look at these cards and make a choice and blah, 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 blah. No. Nope. So I just threw some cards yeah, in for her. So, <laughs> so. so Steve does it. So, so if that answers your question, I like living card games. Which is your favorite, With... though? You've only you've played... I haven't played that many. Three of them. Ashes, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings you played like once a long time ago. I played it a couple times a long time ago to yeah. show you how much I loved you. Actually, I was thinking about bringing back to the channel. Um, I, I think you might like it. I I never did not like that game. That's a good double negative for mm-hmm. you. Um, so I'll rephr- I'll rephrase. All the living card games I've played. So there were those two. What was the third one? Marvel Champions. Marvel. Two of the living card games <laughs> I've played, I like. Uh, Lord of the Rings and Ashes. Marvel Champions is okay. I just get so mad. And I know other games do it, so I don't know exactly why this game in particular jerks me like irks me around um i think i know why you beat the you beat the boss and it's like no Mm -hmm. just kidding restart the first hour of this play meant nothing yep and that just does not work for me but i know there are other games that do that that i play that i'm totally fine with so Mm -hmm. maybe it's just i have a thing against marvel champions i have no idea um yeah uh ryan's like that uh he loves lord of the rings arkham horror and ashes have zero desire to construct a deck and Marvel Champions is very mad to him, so yeah. Similar but again, sense. it's it's fun. Just stop the game after that first act for mm-hmm. me, and then we're good to go. Yeah, um, but we've done that, and you've enjoyed those plays of it. Yeah, yeah. So because otherwise, I just feel like the game wasted my time for the first half. You know. Yeah. Even though it's the experience, the the enjoyment, and the fun you're having, that's not a waste. But anyway, living card games are fun if I don't do the work. That's my answer, Derek. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and the question from Matt on here. Kim, do you play competitive games? I do. Mm-hmm. Um, not so much anymore. But you give me the Ticket to Ride, Lewis and Clark, Dominion that you sold. Um, <laughs> you won't let that go. <laughs> I won't. I told you don't get rid of it. Even though it was collecting dust because we only play co-ops now. <laughs> but... We never play Dominion anymore. We always played other games. Yeah, but see, now I have the Dominion game app on my phone and I'm getting my fix that way, but it's not the same, Steve. Sorry. Um, Settlers of Catan always will have a special place in my heart. I know oh, that's such, yeah. a, such an... It's called Catan now, FYI. People are looking it up. So. Yeah, Catan. It's a really good gateway game into mm. the world of board games. That was one of the first ones we played together. Yes. Um, So games I've mentioned are pretty early in the gaming life that i've had Mm -hmm. what other competitive games wingspan wingspan very good you like yeah that's one competitive Mm -hmm. game we play a lot and that one works well for us because you don't destroy each other's stuff it's just what you have you have it's nice in that way Mm -hmm. we used to play um like back in the innovation i innovation was good and carcassonne Mm -hmm. thank you ryan although uh missed Mist of Carcassonne. Mist yeah. of Carcassonne. I think I like better than the OG. Yep, me too. Um, what else? Alchemy. Oh, Alchemist. Alchemist. Mm-hmm. You know what I meant. Yeah. That one was fun. I, we didn't play it a lot because it was a little, at the time, heavy. Yeah, that one is easily one of my favorite competitive games. Easily. Yeah. 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 So that one, you are. Um, trying to trying to break down ingredients to the base elements, and then by doing different potions, it sounds it's basically a scientific method in a box. It is really it's really interesting how it plays out. You, you need the app, but the app doesn't do anything other than give you answers. Because what you do with the app is you're like 
hey, what happens if you combine these two ingredients together? I get this uh, potion of healing. Cool. Now I kind of have an idea of what properties are in those two ingredients to break them down further. So yeah, it's, it is really well done. I like that one a lot. A yeah, lot. yeah. So I'm not against competitive games at all. I just think I would rather play cooperative ones. And that's kind of why we got down the road of co-op so heavily, because I would bring competitive games home and someone would hit or miss with you. But every single co-op I brought home was a... I knew you'd play it and you'd enjoy it to some extent. As opposed to a competitive game which could flop for you. Well, co-op games can flop for me. True, but... I don't know. Maybe I'm being biased. I love co-op co-ops. <laughs> I think it's a little, <laughs> little biased. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, side tangent, why is it no longer called Settlers of Catan? I don't know. They rebranded it for some reason. I don't re I don't remember the reasoning for that. I just mentioned because if people are watching this video and they're new to the hobby, which would be deep end to watch it now, yeah, but, but it's I mean, called Catan if you want to look for it. Yeah, it's at Target, like yeah, yeah. third shelf or something. It's, it's it's a good gateway game. Yeah, that was that game and Robo Rally uh, were my gateway games into the hobby as a whole. Hmm. So. Uh, let's see. What other questions do we have, Steve? <laughs> Solid deck construction. And again, so. Derek, I don't know why Marvel Champions does that to me, but I, I know other games have the same mechanic. Oh. Mm -hmm. I just don't. I don't know why. Yep. Yep. Maybe the pacing of that. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Derek has a question. What would make you back DC Heroes United? If. Beyond the core box. I know. So I would, I honestly would consider whatever it takes to get the stretchable box, and that's it, because the stretchable boxes, in every single season, has been a value add, like a major value add. That's those are the huge boxes there with all the everything in it. Mm -hmm. So that would be tempting, just so you have like not all of it, but that that part of it. I was thinking about this too. What would make me back DC Heroes United? I think if they had some heavy integration with Marvel, not beyond the fact that they're compatible, but like something more to that. You want like a crossover thing that's... Yeah. If it was something like Sinister Six, but you can combine it with the Marvel stuff and the DC stuff or something together. Yeah, but I mean, we have, like we said, Civil War. You could you could probably make that happen. Well, we the the... The fan made one, yes, but not the the real one. I'm talking real about fan because yeah. there's fan made Civil War. Isn't there a fan made Sinister Six thing that makes it you can put any, or is that part of the one of the boxes we could? Kind That's of... a fan made one too. Yeah. yeah so yeah. the fans know what the people <laughs> want. <laughs> um, so I, I would imagine that's going to happen. But to your point, maybe it's not going to come from Simon. Yeah, I'm not sure what would make me jump on because like, I was really excited about the team team decks in Marvel United and I suspect they're going to add team decks in DC United um, like the Green Lantern Corps for example or the Team Batman what we call them so that'd be cool but I am not as excited about the DC heroes as a whole as I am about Marvel heroes if we come mm -hmm. down to it because uh, I feel like the DC actually I was listening to podcasts about this the DC vs. Marvel and the comic book series as they came out DC, when they came out, they were very focused on Superman with his powers and everything, and they kept adding more people. It was all about the powers. And Marvel came out, and they were doing superheroes as well, and they had powers, but it wasn't about the powers. It was more focused on the characters. If you if you think about it, like, like if you think about Captain America in the movies, like, yeah, he's got super strength, and he can throw his shield and everything, but, like, how does he defeat the bad guy? Is by some other means, like, through discussion or something else that defeats him, right? As opposed to, like, hitting him in the head with a shield. Um, and of course, you know, like Hulk Smash Wars, I mean, he'll punch things. So it's not always true, but like, generally there are alternative ways, and the character development is what really gets me to like those characters. I'm a huge uh, X Men uh, fan too, so like, give me all the X Men <laughs> for sure. So that's X Men ninety seven, loving that series. It's it's great. Yeah. But yeah, so I don't know. I'm not sure where to give me back it. So fine by me. You want to get offered for sale? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think the core and Batman and the stretchable box and that's it. I'm not a Superman fan at all. Yeah, Superman's pretty OP. It's pretty OP. Bat I do love Batman as a character. So if it had Batman box with something unique in it, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. But uh I am 
I want to get some for the channel, but not that much because we have so much coming. For the channel. It's you gotta do for the channel. Not for me. I don't want it. It's fine. It's not for you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, Ryan's a good question. I think you find the fun and co-ops easier, which I think is true. Like mm -hmm. I I don't like messing with other people's stuff when playing games. Like if if like take back or take back. Uh take that mechanics and like stab you back, stab you in the back type stuff, that's not me in games at all. I just don't enjoy that stuff. Um so like if it's a competitive game but we're like racing to do something together, like we have Lewis and Clark you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. I enjoy that one because it's engine building and I can't do anything to really mess with you. We're just racing with our engines to get see you can cross the west Ooh. as fast as possible. Stone Saga, that's another right? That's what that's called, Stone Saga or um Stone Saga is really good. That's co-op. Yeah. Is yeah. that co-op? No, the yeah. little the Euro placement worker placement one. Stone Stone Age. Is that it? Yes. Okay. You think Stone Age, which is like the old school worker placement one, which I don't think you can buy anymore. Because we would play Lewis and Clark and that that other one. Yeah, that's Stone one. Age. Okay. I think Stone Age too. Yeah. Um. So you're not. A, yeah, I see that when we play co-op, you're not a big stab in the back person i i can be she gets competitive <laughs> real competitive I, I do get really competitive and um, i see who you get it from too my mother mm -hmm. i'm glad you like okay. my mom because that's who i'm becoming I, yeah that's true <laughs> so quick story time your mom will be okay if i tell the story it's fine so um her mom really likes scrabble quite a bit so i would yes. sit down and play scrabble with her this is how competitive she is her mom is a well she's retired now but she was a teacher um she's very smart and we'll play game this scrabble game with her and she will intentionally cheat on the game make up a word because she knows we know she's a teacher and she knows we won't call her out on it because she knows way more words than we do <laughs> so I'm like ah, stop it <laughs> as we've gotten older i think we know better <laughs> kind of but she still does it it's like ah she intentionally we'll cheats. Have it, cyber. <laughs> so. um but yeah no competitive yeah i I have fun with them, but no, I'll typically play yeah. cooperative games. Also because like my brother, like in to have him play board games, it's really gotta be co op. He doesn't really want yeah. the competition yeah. um board games. So just bringing in pools of people to play with, I think we all tend to lean towards the cooperative play. Mm -hmm. Um Oh Paint the Roses is another really good co op game. I was just thinking of our last um game night that we had. What what did we play for that? None of them are. We were, played the crew. Yeah, but none of them were just um, one competitive. No, they're all. They're all. No, we played wingspan last time. Oh, we did. We did. Yeah, we did play yeah, wingspan. Yeah. Anyway. Which is interesting. Uh, Wordspan's out, and here that's better. But you're not interested in Wordspan. Why is it better? I thought it was just kind of reskinned. It's reskinned, but they have additional mechanics. I guess the com card combos are more interesting. You can fill your board more than wingspan. Um, it sounds cool. Um. Part of the allure of Wingspan for me, though, is the fact that it's based on reality. Um, you know, abstractly, of course, right? And I like reading about the birds and where they're from and stuff on the cards. And that's that's really fun for me, so. Yeah. Yep. Um, and it's, it's also fun because um, when we play, we'll play with my father. Mm -hmm. and oh, yeah, your dad's great. His college roommate was an ornithologist, mm -hmm. a bird person. And so my dad knows like these random bird facts from his college yeah. roommate. So we'll be playing the game, and he's like, "Oh, look at this!" And it's it just it's, rattles stuff off. It's, it's adorable. It's, it's so, fun. Yeah, it's really fun. Yeah. So anyway, but yeah, cool. What other questions? Let's see. We have another one. What are your most anticipated games of twenty twenty four? Do you even know what's coming out in twenty twenty four? No. Okay, <laughs> think about that. So, um. Oh, wait, I answer this real quick, Derek. I told the designer I can't wait for them to drop the South America expansion. I'm looking for one bird. I know exactly which bird you're That's waiting right. for. That's right, Derek. It's his logo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Matt. The problem with the worm span is it's always dragon. Very good. Very good. Oh, goodness. His roommate was bird person. Hey. <laughs> he was. That's considered rude in bird person culture. <laughs> That's right. Ryan will get that reference. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, man. Um, okay, anticipated games in 2024. Um, I have been regularly looking at uh, the 
the Kickstarter page for Company of Heroes. I am super, super excited for that one. In fact, um, I may have purchased something else for that game recently. What? <laughs> Surprise! So... <laughs> Well, I was talking with the designer um, of that game, and and there was talk of like, hey, by the way, it's coming in this crate. And depending on what you're getting in that game, you might need more than one crate. So I messaged him like, hey, I'm getting these things. Can I fit it all in one crate or should I, do I need two? And he's like, yeah, you probably need two for what, what we got coming. So I ordered an extra crate. But that's all I ordered. Just more to keep it stored. That's fine. I, <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> I know. I know. It's fine. As but, long as you put it away. I went. No. You stay I out. went on a cleaning spree. So, <laughs> Derek, when you come, hopefully nice in two weeks, you can walk into this room again. Um, Sorry. What's up? <laughs> oh, it saved a clip. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, Matt saved a clip. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, <sighs> yeah. So... <laughs> more coming for that one i yeah i went all in on that one I'm so really company here, there's sas is that the same that's no way one. different way different. that's way different yeah but that's 25 no that's coming this year that okay. one that one should be this year i believe there's also earth under siege is coming this year which i was also very excited about um let's look at this latest bar is coming soon actually um let me see who else is coming ses uh marvel Knight, of course season three leviathan wilds I'm excited for you to play that one. I think you're really enjoy that. Oh, we did that one. That's in the book thing, right? Did you play that on stream with yeah. the giants? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Why? <laughs> okay. Uh, Rogue Angels. I think that's gonna make this year. I'm not yeah, sure. they're saying 2024, but they're like maybe. Yeah, 25. Rogue Angels. Exactly. Yeah. That's gonna be a good. One. I'm really looking forward to Rogue Angels. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, Deep Rock Galactic. Um. Uh. Speaking of Ryan. Um. He, the two of us, we tend to play a game like once a week or something. We checked out the mod of Deep Rock Galactic on Tabletop Simulator, and they have the expansion stuff in there, so I got a chance to look at that. It looks really, really good. So, Sorry, my uh, girlfriends are texting. That's fine, but it, the vibration is going to pick up on the mic. So, um, so yes, I am really excited for that. It's going to change the game pretty significantly, from what I can tell. So those are jumping at me. Uh, let's see what else is... But Company of Heroes is the big one. I think that's the main one I'm waiting for. That I know is coming out this year. Aridia is amazing, but I'm not sure we're going to see it this year or not. I'm not sure. That's the one I'm not I'm curious about. I have an address notification for Leviathan Wilds. Yeah, Leviathan Wilds is excellent. You guys will really enjoy that game. Really enjoy it. Um... Actually, speaking of other ones I heard about, um, Orange Shall Overcome. There's a reprint coming next month with an expansion, and I think he says like it's basically done. So he's gonna try to turn it around and get it out before the end of the year. I'm sure you told me, but what's different in the reprint, or is it just he they wanted to release it again, or did they make changes? Well, there's expansion. Work? So it's an expansion, but it's yeah. not like reprint because we had to fix things, right? No, no, it's just straight okay. reprint. I, at least I don't think it has fixed things. Well, I I think he was a little bit upset about the locations, um, how they were, the die cut came out, but it's nothing major. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if there's any changes like that. But uh, I, it's the main thing is there are, there are rules on Kickstarter where you cannot bring the same product back to um, back to Kickstarter without something new in it. So it could be like a pack of cards and you'd be good to go. So yeah, that is the reason why for the reprint plus something else. So. Uh, yeah. Slay Aspire, I'm excited for you to play, see what you think of that one, because I think you're really enjoy that one as well. Street Masters, I don't know if that's coming out this year. That might, I think it's a next year thing, so. But yeah, the, the one I'm most excited for is Company of Heroes, for sure. A major, major game. Awesome. So. There's a lot on that list you're scrolling through. Yep. There's been, there's been a lot of games, and I, someone, I forgot, I, no one had the, I didn't pull the comment up, but they were talking about, like, not as excited for games coming to Kickstarter this year as games delivering from Kickstarters this this month. Sorry, not this year, this month. Which I agree with because there's just so much coming that was delayed due to all the shipping issues and reasons. stuff like that. Reasons, <laughs> a lot of reasons. So, yeah. Yep, yep. What's the reason for the Kickstarter rule? Any idea? I think it's to prevent people from just using as a storefront. Because it's not to say like, oh, here's my game. Just put up there and people sell it and just put it up again. 
And so the Kickstarter could get flooded just as a storefront for a bunch of different stores, right? Um, of course, Kickstarter takes a cut, but it's a pretty good marketing um, system because a lot of people go to Kickstarter for these games. That's my guess, Ryan. I'm not positive on that. So we'll see. Yeah, Greg, it was you. Thank you. Thank you. He was... You, Greg was the one that had the comment about um, being excited for stuff coming this month as opposed to the new stuff, which definitely agree with you that. There's some really good stuff coming out this month. Let's see. Uh, there we do. Oh, that was the last question I see on here. Yep. Yep, last question I see on here. Uh, let's see. Any other questions? Oh, Phantom Epoch. That's true. That's coming soon. Oh, uh, that is coming as well. That was a fun game. I think you enjoyed that one too. Which one was that? That's um the one with the how do you describe it? You had you had the multi you had the, the everyone had a unique deck of cards and you would go on different missions with the missions were a book and then you would also go and level up your character when you went back to the ship. Oh the space one. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't okay, Rogue Angels because there was a lot of like really good space games yeah. coming out. It was yeah, it's Earth Under Siege. Awesome. Awesome game. Um Phantom Epoch great game and rogue angels like those three like the trifecta of awesomeness when it comes to sci-fi games you can't, can't go wrong with them so okay. yep uh King oh, Chronicles yeah that's coming right back. that is coming back that's, that's i forgot about that thank you brian cool yeah i was thinking about bringing that back to the channel because we started playing it and we stopped we have so much content it's hard to like figure out what to play and i want to make sure i take time to cover the new stuff so you people have time to back or understand what's going on but um, I think that's when I want to get back to the channel, make it a regular thing for us. Because we enjoy that. Uh, the initiative system got my little qualms with. Well, okay. Go ahead. We, I think that that got a really bad rap to start. But after playing the game, it kind of worked out. Uh, kind of. Like, I don't think you experienced it where... Because I've, I've actually experienced it where I didn't have a single turn in a battle. Okay, yeah, I never, I never dealt with yeah, that. It's, so, I mean, it's the very possible the, to happen. The, the possibility is there, but low probability? I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's low, but it can still happen, which is a bummer. Yeah. JV, David Jones Locker Expansion Ghost Ship. Yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one. That was fun. Yeah. Um, I've been, speaking which I a little behind the scenes stuff, I've been meeting with that designer. Um, his name's Zach. He has a new game coming out, so I've been playtesting that with him, um, which has been fun. I also playtested um, the Avatar The Last Airbender game. That's coming from Bad Crow Games, the same um, designer for uh, Company of Heroes. So I played that one oh. recently. So um, I will be covering both those on this channel when they're ready to be shared. So you guys can uh, be, up, be heads up on that one. Um, oh, you know what I forgot that's coming? Union City Alliance. I was just thinking about that, just waiting for the moment to interject. I was kind of surprised we forgot. <laughs> yeah, that should be pretty soon. And then, so that will deliver. That game's awesome. That's, I know there's a lot of superior games, but that is one that stands out. It's just very different, very fun. I really like that one. So that one is going to deliver, and shortly after it delivers, there will be another Kickstarter for the expansions, and you get their base game as well. Um, he's going to wait till it gets in people's hands and some reviews get out there so people have some some buzz some information about it and then he'll launch that one so that and I have, that one has the expansions ready to go and i believe he's working on the expansions after that as well so this is going to be a product line that's going to have quite a bit of support for it which is really really cool yeah yeah it's dom season three map reunited we if, when we see that there we will have to make that happen because that was so much fun get ready for another 300 plays <laughs> <laughs> so many plays it was a great time though it was a great time yeah yeah that's good. i loved it um, yeah. Do you think? Sorry, I'm going back to Union City Alliance. Yeah. Do you think that would replace any other superhero games in the collection? One comes to mind for me. Which one comes to mind for you? Not because it's similar, but because again, I mentioned superhero fatigue, and we have so many. Mm -hmm. Marvel Dagger. Would that go? They're very different them? games. They are very different. I think maybe it's because the more I've played Marvel Dagger recently, the less. I'm the less I'm excited about it. Yeah. Um, I agree with you hesitantly. Hesitantly. I actually like Marvel Dagger quite a bit, but there's something off about it, the game itself. It needs something fixed, something tweaked, and I think it'd be a, a very good game. 
And you I'm want... trying to nail down what that no, is. No, I think you want more control. Yes, and I don't know if that is the fix it needs or not, but it I, might I be. I think that would break it, though. Not, I have an idea. I have a house rule. I think it would work out Okay, we'll, well try the house rule, yeah. and then maybe, maybe yeah. we'll come back. I mean, don't get me wrong. It is it is a fun game, but it's not... I don't think I would suggest playing it over the other superhero games that we have, I guess is my point. Okay. Um, okay. Although our son Caleb really likes that game, because he'll play War Machine and just destroy everything and that's a lot of fun for him so maybe yeah. maybe in that sense it will stay in the collection just for his sake the combos are really fun that game in the sense that you can pair an aspect with a hero and they have different implications of how they do that it's it's really i like that quite a bit um i don't i don't think that game that game could get more support and they could probably fix it um but again you keep saying fix it but what what would that i, I do i want to know what the house I, rule is i really but I think the problem, and and we and our last playthrough, things came up for us was the opportunity for having a role that effectively does nothing. I think that is in some games it's okay, in that game it's particularly bad. And that hit me a lot last game, right? Where I could not at make an attack roll for the life of me. So maybe I understand Derek a little bit better now. Um, and I couldn't get the rolls to land, and I was so frustrated. But, to, I mean, Derek just mentioned Eldritch Horror. Um, Eldritch Horror's first expansion added a way to mitigate that. And it made Eldritch Horror so much better. So they could literally add that into Marvel Dagger, and I think that would be it. also make it so much better as well. So <laughs> You're welcome, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, maybe yeah. maybe whatever your house rule is, I'd be interested in trying that. Maybe that's what would get me excited about it again. But I think that will do it. But also, a part of me is like, again, the superhero fatigue. It's like, yeah. if you say let's play a, a superhero game, I will hundred percent pick Marvel United mm -hmm. over Dagger. What about Legendary? I'll play Legendary as well, but mm -hmm. I still might choose United over Legendary. I would too at this point. I would too. Yeah. Yeah. And mainly because I don't have to do any of the setup in the cards and figuring that out. <laughs> Legendary is great, though. Legendary has a lot of really fun card play. Like, if you mm -hmm. like card play, that's a great game for that, for sure. Um, <laughs> and then that's that 20, right, exactly. Derek. You used exactly. up all the good mojo on this, this stream. But, uh, um, yeah, Mar Union City Alliance is generic superhero theme, which will be different, but it's, it's really good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you like Legendary, Derek, because. Um, I know talking to you about this in, earlier, uh, you, you didn't like the game. And a lot of people agree, and I agree with you with, with the way you're reasoning, is the core set. If you played only the core set of Marvel Legendary, it does not hold up. It's not a good experience. Um, but the expansions... Go ahead. No, keep going. I'm going to follow up with the question. Go. Okay. But the expansions have taken that game to awesome places, and it's really fun and engaging. I really, really enjoy it. Go ahead. Okay. So when you hear people say... Oh, the core set's not great. We've said it about vanilla MU. We're saying it about legendary. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe not great. It's not the right way to say it. It's it could be more. It could be better. It could engage you better. It could do something more. So give give the expansions a chance. But then you have a a thought of well, if the core set's not good, why would I? Mm -hmm take a leap of faith and just assume the next step's going to be better and make it better. Yep. So wouldn't you think... You should not assume that. Well, then, so then, so assume then that. what is... What's the... You should be open to it being different and better, but not assume it to be different and better. Yeah. So then, mm -hmm. you know, there are people that might say, well, the game should be best straight out of the box. And they're right. Okay. They are right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Unfortunately, that... The reality is that's not always the case. Mm -hmm. So, but I, agree, I definitely agree with that. Cool. I feel like I had more to say and I just don't... Just... No, I, I completely <laughs> okay. in your court on this one. All right, I was, course... I was ready to have this like back and forth. No? And you're like... The corset should sell the game. I mean, if it's not, then you kind of... You're, you're losing audience, so it comes down to it. And this is something that I think Mike and I have had a lot of discussions on. And he's a, he's in a very different... Mike from One Soft Coke Shop. It's a different state where like... Um, we both agree the core set should sell the game. Where we differ on is the ex expand playing the expansions and coming back to the game and reevaluating it. Because like for Mike, and it has a lot to do with him just coming so many different games. Um, it's hard. Like why would I come back to that game? I know I didn't like the core experience. 
Um, and I get that. I can just move on to a completely different game that I know I, the core expansion is better. Complete valid, right? Uh, at the same time, though, if the expansions improve the game, like, how do you talk about it from the core set only? Or do you talk about from where the game has progressed to, what states progressed to? And I like approaching it from the latter. If the game has progressed to a different state, we should talk about that state, but be clear about it. Like, hey, this game is great based upon these factors, or th this expansion specifically, or this mod, or whatever it is, right? So people know the difference between why the core could fail and then something down the line could make it better. Yeah, that's true. You do revisit and evaluate games multiple times. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just the type of yep. analysis guy that you are. <laughs> Uh, Papa's got a question here. Papa, do you think they will have core set of DC Knight at Gen Con to play this year? Ooh. It's in August and they're launching in July. Uh, I don't not. know. I don't, probably I don't not. Know. Maybe the demo. The, uh, they will have promos for it, maybe. Actually, I can answer that. They will at, definitely have promos for United at Gen Con this year. However, they are not for DC that I know of. They might have DC ones, but I know for sure they're having Marvel United promos at Gen Con. That's been announced. So can we coordinate better on who's going to go get what? Because <laughs> I heard stories about you boys last summer. Derek right? and I got them. It's fine. We'll get them. Derek and I will get them. We just can't ask Colin and Baron to go get them because they're directionally challenged. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're sitting in line early again. We'll have to do that again. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, Ron's got a good one. Um, and the difference between cores is an interesting subject, too. Think of MU Core versus X Men Core. Exactly. Like, like, MU Core, it was, you know, it did its job, but it's X Men Core is so much better. So much better. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep. Um, I think some games get better over the later games like Resident Evil games. I have not played the Resident Evil specifically, but I do agree with your statement for sure. Uh, uh, Cthulhu, Cthulhu Death May Die is getting a new core game in Season 3. Did not know that, Ryan. That's interesting. So, yeah. <laughs> sure you don't like being kicked in the crotch but we have to give you a donut first yeah yeah, yeah they're yeah. good man so who can i bribe to snag me some promos um i am sure derek and i will try to do our best to see if we can get some promos as giveaways um they it's hard to do it because um we'll walk up there like hey we do the channel stuff and they're like i don't know if i know you i'm like oh okay it's fine kidding we don't know you yeah exactly they don't know us <laughs> so, you. But if we can, we will, and we'll do these giveaways because Derek and I are very much aligned on screw scalpers. <laughs> so yes, because they're giving away the promos for free. So I I I know. I mean, yeah, you paid the ticket at Gen Con to go to Gen Con, but it just feels bad to me for you know, asking for that type of money. So anyway. I get it. Now, if I really wish they would just sell the promos directly on the website and just be done with it. Like, cool if you're at Gen Con, get for free, but then you can, if you weren't there, you can buy it directly from the website. That's like amazing. Awesome. Mm -hmm. But uh, they're not going to do that, unfortunately. So, cool. Um, let's see. Any other questions I missed? I don't think so. That's a good, that's a good point, actually. Um, Derek mentioned about having the demo for, um, DC Heroes United that might be a might be for demo. I can see that being a possibility. Yeah, in which case I'm sure we'll sit down and try to play that one because that'd be that'd be fun to try out. Yeah. Um, now for Gen Con, there is one demo I absolutely want to try and make happen, and that is um, Elder Scrolls from Chip Theory Games. So that is a game that I didn't back because so far the Chip Theory Games have not sold me yet. Not saying they're bad games, but they're just haven't. None of them have really wowed me. That like, yes, here's my money. Boom. <laughs> I think Elder Scrolls is might be it, but I haven't really given a chance a, a, a play yet. And the plan was they're going to be demoing it at Gen Con, and then the pledge manager will be open until at the end of Gen Con. So you have time to pledge it then and there. So I'm hoping I can sit down with you and we can try that demo together, and we can really get an idea of this is this something we want to sink our teeth into because because the problem with chip theory games was a problem in a, 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 it's a pro and a con is their production quality is amazing so they have neoprene mats these really awesome chips and everything plastic cards like highest highest quality of everything and so the price point is super high mm -hmm. so 
it makes it difficult to take a chance because of the high price point. So we'll see. Yeah, I actually I actually already um emailed the the Chip Three Games guys. Like, hey, I know you're having a demo there. Any chance we can do it? Like, hey, email me later. So hopefully we can make it happen. Yeah. Or we can do what Matt suggested. What's that? <laughs> Run a bit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We can get up there and he'll be like, I love you guys. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> set, set the stage for it. That's right. Oh, oh it's totally that. not stage. It's fine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, do you want to talk about Gen Con, though, and how what we think might be happening? Oh, we should. Um, I should share that. Yeah. yeah, because I know the original plan was we would try to get a, a room or something to um, yes. have people come play in like, like a, like a, a private collection. Area. So we would yeah. have you know, all the various channels all come together. Mm -hmm. um, that's not happening. No. Because the hotels uh, won't release them because they're all being held for the They all are held up for sp yeah. specific events. They won't, like, have a room for a day or anything. It's just not possible to make this happen. It comes down to it, unfortunately. So we tried, but that doesn't mean we're not going to have, have it anyway. So the current plan yeah. is... Saturday morning, we did this last year. We're gonna do it again this year. There's open place play space at um the JW Marriott. It is across from the convention center. It's there's a skywalk if you want to you know use that. But there is the grand hall with it open up for Saturday morning and it's first come first serve, grab a table and you can and you can just play games. And so we will snag probably at two tables for uh, Co-op Guild, Meet Me at the Table, and Kanji Studios, because the three of us, the three of those channels will be together. Um, we are expecting additional channels to show up as well. I fully anticipate we'll see people from One Stop Co-op Shop stopping by. I did talk to Brews and Board Games. Um, he's probably going to swing by as well. Uh, so we're going to have both people just swing by. I don't know when they're going to be there, but long story short is we're going to be there all day. And so when if you guys are going, going to Gen Con and want to meet anybody from those channels... I'll give you more details when we know more details, and we can you can meet us there and you can play games with us or just or stop by say hi. Yep. We'd love to see you. Honestly, that's mm -hmm. that's my highlight of Gen Con every year is meeting the people that we see on the chat and every, everywhere. So that's right. <laughs> I yeah. have some autographs yet, yeah, right? <laughs> so good. cool. All right. Okay. Any and, last call? Anything else? <laughs> I, I think <laughs> we answered all the questions. Answer. Um. Oh, I talked to a guy at work about Wonka, the movie. Wonka? Yeah. Yeah. You liked it more than I did. I, I did. I didn't really like it. I liked it better than I expected, so it was yeah. it was good. It was fun. Matt, I think, like, everyone, not everyone, a lot of people are like, oh, Timothy Charlemagne, or whatever his name is. And I'm like, meh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't I think know. He's doing a good job. So. Yeah. I think a part of it was that movie, for me, I wasn't expecting a musical. I mean, Willy Wonka's musical. I know. You got a ton of songs in there. I know, but they're like the Oompa Loompa songs that like kick it off. There's more than that. Yeah, he does sing. I don't have to make sense. I'm just saying. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's fun. Whatever. Have a good evening. <laughs> no. Have no, you no. seen Renegade Neil on Disney Plus? I have not, Matt. I don't know. I, have to look, I don't know what that is either. Or ne ne Renegade Nell? I, I got to look at what that is. I'm not sure. I'm trying to go this year with my first time going. What is the latest you can buy tickets to go? Um, as long as they don't sell out Papa Porter, you can go there on that day and just get tickets. Have you bought your ticket? No. See what I live with? Well, we were trying we got the whole mix up of like you've got the yeah. press badge. Yeah, and I've so tried okay, so it's, it's fine, I'll just buy a ticket. They issued the press badge to me. I don't need that. I'm sorry. I'm not you you go do that. And I emailed and I asked them to transfer it. Just ghosted again because nobody knows me. <laughs> I'm not. They don't know me either. Trust me. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's go buy your ticket. Yeah. So you should be okay, Papa Porter. Um, I if you know you, you want to go, do get the tickets because I would say a month before. So we're looking like July, June, July. It has in the past sold out. Um, it is a possibility. It's not likely to happen, but it can happen. So. I, I mean, it's April now. You still got time. I won't worry about it at this point. But um, when it gets like a month out, mm, take a look at the numbers and we'll we'll see. But yeah, assuming this is a sellout, you can go there on that day. In fact, I used to do that. I actually went to school at Purdue. 
And Purdue was... Final four, baby. Yeah, final yeah. four. We both won Purdue, by the way. First time since the 80s. Yeah. 1980. And, okay, I'm, I'm just like... Our whole college career and every, like, it's always like, oh, we're doing really great. And then, I'll oh, choke. Doing really great. Choke. But maybe this year's the year. We'll see. We'll see. Sorry. But, yeah. um, yeah, I used to go to, uh, you know, move in for the, for the, um, for the school year. And Gen Con was, if I went, like, early, I could just move my stuff in and then go visit Gen Con. Because there's that Indy. It was only, like, a couple hours drive. It was easy to get to. So I would go there, buy a ticket, and just walk around and come back. So it was a nice, like, last break before all the classes started. So I used to do that um, before college uh, every year. So Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I think we've exhausted uh, this one. No, I'm reading Matt's comment uh, about Renegade Nell. Um, so she's it's a young woman in the... England, seven, single three. Superpowers. She's a witch. Yep. <laughs> I, that's so funny. <laughs> um, oh, I watched um, The Old old Guard again, and then I read the comics. Mm-hmm. Um because i felt like it and that reminds me of um like andy and and what's her name when they're sure. deemed to be witches and anyway it's an interesting thought cool okay we'll wrap this up the yeah. only other thing i have to say is no co-op chat this weekend unfortunately we got a scheduling conflict we will have it next weekend instead so yep and i will bid you all adieu for two weeks <laughs> Um, I get to go back to Europe um, for work. So, although this time in the two weeks, it's only two countries. Last time I had to do four countries in That's two weeks, lot. and I was That's dead. Um, so, Steve, don't burn the house down. You'll be okay. Keep an eye on him. <laughs> <laughs> so, hence why I'm doing a solo playthrough Monday. So, <laughs> okay. yeah, coming right in the chat and hanging out with us tonight. Uh, yes, more schnitzel. Exactly. Yes. More schnitzel. I'm so schnitzled out after two weeks. I don't want any more meat and potatoes. I don't just want salad. That's, That's true. By the time I get home, it's like I want fresh strawberries yeah. and salads and yeah, stuff yeah. that doesn't have like um like a vinegar dressing it's thingy. Delicious. On it. It's delicious. It's just It's really good, but yeah. it's like I need a little bit. I need different. Like, <laughs> Thank you buy everything. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then I'll like come home and it's like I want I want beef or um Mexican or Asian yeah, food or like yeah. really like yeah. mixed food anyway it'll be fine now um, you know it was like when i came back from the strips yeah i'm not complaining it's fun to see different parts of the world <laughs> and fun. experience yeah, other things but fun. work trips I, it's not recreational yeah. like even my my free weekend that i have it's just a travel weekend right right um okay ice free drink exactly brian yep yeah yep yeah what's that um no but thanks again and what else? Thank you to the Patreons and, and Ko-Fi subscribers. Um, really excited to see how that interactive chat is going to work. I know you announced that previously mm-hmm. with the, the guild members. Uh, guild masters can jump in on the co-op chats on, on certain ones that we'll have in the future. So that should be really cool. So next, Not this Saturday, but in the following Saturday, we'll try it out. So Yeah, yeah. Should be fun. Um, so, okay. That's all we got. See you guys next time at the Guild. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.